Good evening. Uh, we'll begin in just a short minute, um, but thank you for joining. I'm Rabbi Ethan Prosnitz, um, and uh, we are here to uh, mark uh, Yom HaShoah. Thank you to those who are joining us online, and we'll begin in about three or four minutes. So keep on talking.
Everyone has a name given to him by God and given to him by his parents. Everyone has a name given to them by their stature and the way they smile and given to them by their clothing. Everyone has a name given to her by the mountains and given to her by her walls. Everyone has a name given to him by the stars and given to him by the neighbors. Everyone has a name given to him by his sins and given to him by his longing. Everyone has a name given to them by their enemies and given to them by their love. Everyone has a name given to her by her holidays and given to her by her work. Everyone has a name, given to them by the seasons and given to them by their blindness. Everyone has a name, given to them by the sea and given to them by their death. In our Jewish calendar, we mark the day of Yom HaShoah from last evening to sundown tonight. And we thank you for gathering for this moment a memory, memory of names that we don't know, memory of names that may be family members of ours, six million Jews that were murdered in the Holocaust. And tonight we are blessed to have a community of faith with our Holy Trinity brothers and sisters who are gathering with us here at Temple Emmanuel and a very special guest, Rabbi Abraham Skorka, who will share some words later this evening. We will have opportunity for some meditation, for remembrance, as well as some learning, too. In the presence of eyes which witnessed the slaughter, which saw the oppression, the heart could not bear. And as witness the heart that once taught compassion until the days came to pass that crushed human feeling, I have taken an oath to remember it all, to remember not once to forget, forget not one thing to the last generation when degradation shall cease, to the last to its ending when the rod of instruction shall have come to conclusion, an oath, not in vain, passed over the night of terror. An oath, no morning shall see me at the flesh pots again. An oath, lest from this we learned nothing. And as we recall this dark time in our history, we cannot help but think of the people of Ukraine. How can we say never again when bombs fall on Baba Yar, when millions run for their lives or take shelter in subway stations? Holy one who remembers all, do not forsake them. As one of Ukraine's greatest teachers, Rebbe Nachman is said to have taught the exodus from Egypt occurs in every human being, in every era, in every year, and in every day. Holy One, may this teaching be fulfilled speedily in our days. May peace rain down upon all the peoples of the world, and may we study war no more. Amen. Page 522 in our Sidor, in our prayer book. And we read it together. We kindle these lights in memory of the six million Jews murdered by the Nazis and their collaborators. May their memory of the righteous be for a blessing. Zikronam Livracha.
Let us remember our brothers and our sisters, the homes and the cities and the houses and the villages, the streets of the town that bustled like rivers, and the inn and standing solitary on the way, the old man with the etched out features, the mother in her sweater, the girl with cleats and the children. We shall remember the day, the day in its noon, the sun that rose over the stake of blood, the skies that stood high in silence. We shall remember the mounds of ash beneath flowering parks. Let the living remember their dead, for behold, they are here before us. Behold their eyes cast around and about. So let us not rest. May our lives be worthy of their memory. So today is a moment of memory. It's a moment to remember our loved ones and those that have no one else to remember. And one way we do that is by sharing words, sharing history, sharing words of hope as well. And so today we are lucky, this weekend we are lucky to be joined by Rabbi Abraham Skorfa. We'll have a longer introduction tomorrow at Shabbat services, uh, but uh, we are so lucky for him to be with us, to be our teacher. And I just want to share words that he shared in his newest book um, about hope. Hope is one of the fundamental components of resilience. We see this in numerous biblical passages in the context of the first devastation of Jerusalem in 586 BCE. Hope cannot be rebuilt upon what has been irreversibly lost. It is rebuilt by beginning to create anew. The penultimate verse of Lamentation says, Restore us to yourself, Lord, that we may return, renew our days as of old. This combination of renewal and as of old, contains great teaching. All hope must be both a restoration and a renewal. And so while we gather here tonight to remember, we also are here to hope as well. My dear brothers and sisters, one of the most common attitudes of the Shoah survivors was a desire not to speak about their experiences, not to tell about the horrors they saw. Their humiliation was too great. The degradation of human values and the human condition itself reach such degrees of perversity that there were no proper words to express it. The words burned the tongue and the scream got cut in the throat. When the news of the extermination of the Jews came to then British mandate on Palestine, the reaction of the great writers and poets was, on the one hand, the classic Jewish attitude of remembrance, and on the other hand, to fight with weapons in hand under a Jewish flag. Shmuel Yosef Agnon wrote about those years of the 1940s in two stories. The first, Ha'adonit Ve'arochel, The Lady and the Peddler, was published in the compilation Basar in 1943. It was devoted to the Palestinian Jews who had volunteered in the British Army. The strange story could be understood as a metaphor of the reality of hate and clash between the Jews and the European people they lived in midst of them for centuries. The second story has Siman, the sign written in 1944, is a short requiem in memory of the assassinated Jews in his little town, Buchach, and about his own sentiments 
and his special Kaddish that he resided in his new home in Jerusalem. He lighted a ner a candle in eternal remembrance of the past and a torch of bravery and of rebuilding of the future. The tale testimonies from the Shoah were dense when there were dense curse, and those who and those given by the very few who had been able to escape the horror and to reach the land of Israel were unbelievable to those who heard them. Eli Wiesel was able to tell the story of the hell he experienced in Auschwitz only 11 years after the Shoah in 1956. Interesting, the point, as you know, I was born in Argentina, and uh, his uh, book was printed in Argentina uh, in Yiddish under the name Und die Welt hat geschwiegen, and the world maintained silence, was in silence. And this was the, the base for uh, the other very famous books that uh, he published about the Shoah during his life. Silence was the first response to many of those who survived the indescribable. Silence, indeed, is the most appropriate course when thinking about Auschwitz, according to André Ner in his book, The Exile of the World, From the Silence of the Bible to the Silence of Auschwitz, from 1970. The first steps to establish a Memorial Day for our ancestors who perished in the Shoah was officially taken in 1946 by the then Chief Rabbinate in Palestine. It designated the day of fasting on the 10th of Tevet, when the beginning of the siege of Jerusalem by the Babylonian is remembered <laughs> as the day on which relatives should recite the Kaddish for those who perish during the Shoah on some unknown date. In 1951, the 27th of Nisan, the earliest halachically permissible date after Pesach, was said to be Heroes and Martyrs Day. Today, to recall the revolt against the Nazis in the Warsaw Ghetto. That uprising had broken out on the eve of Pesach, of Passover in 1943. The 10th of Tevet is the day of the morning. The 27th of Nisan, today, is the day of heroism. The two days enshrine different concepts. One is the day of prayer for the peace of those who did not experience peace in their lives. It is not a day on which we are asking an explanation from God. Who are we to demand answers from the Almighty? But we are claiming the bestowal of divine mercy on the souls of our unfortunate ancestors. The second Remembrance Day, the 27th of Nisan, is devoted to our Jewish and human historical memory. On the eve of Pesach 5703, April 19th, 1943, Nazi troops entered the Warsaw Ghetto in order to take to Treblinka the remnants of the 350,000 Jews who had once lived there. They were greeted by gunfire and resistance from the 35,000 Jews who remained in the ghetto after the actions, in, in German, the actions of spring, which actions was the German name to, to take Jews and uh, to take them by force, of course, to the, to the concentration camps in order to kill them there, to assassinate them there. The actions of spring and summer of 1942. 
setting aside the debates among historians over the accurate description of the uprising, it is clear that the resistors organized themselves to fight for their lives and for human dignity. There were two separate fighting groups, one of them led by Mordechai Anilevich, in which all the Zionist groups, the communist and Bundist, were united. There was also the revisionist Betar group and Rabbi Menachem Zemba, one of the last rabbis of the Warsaw Ghetto and former chief rabbi of Warsaw, approved and backed the uprising. He continues teaching Torah during the worst and calamitous days in the ghetto. There were about 700 fighters. The rest of the population hit on a network of bunkers with the firm resolve not to go passively into the transport wagons to Treblinka. Two flags fluttered on the roofs of the ghetto, the Jewish and the Polish. It was the first civil uprising against the Nazis in a city of their conquered territories. The Warsaw Ghetto Uprising was an inspiration for further resistance actions. Despite the silence of many about those horrible days, there were some poets who were able to shout out their sentiments, feelings, and messages for generations to come, like the ancient prophets had done in the distant past. On April 30th, 1943, when the Warsaw Ghetto was in flames, the famous poet Abraham Shlonsky published in the newspaper Haaretz a well-known poem that you heard at the beginning of this ceremony, an oath. In May 90, 1943, a young Yiddish poet, a poet who wrote in Yiddish, yeah, Hirschglick, wrote in the Besi ghetto of Vilna a song in memory of the fighters of the Warsaw Uprising that very soon was adopted as the anthem for the Jewish partisans and fighters against Nazism. And you have, I saw in the special prayer books, um, the, the first two um, stanzas of this anthem. The first says, never say that you are going the last way. For lead and sky are concealing blue days. Our long back Hours still will come. Beneath our feet, the earth shall tremble. Here we are. The third stanza says, the morning sun will brighten our present and the yesterday as the foe will fade away. But if the sun delays in the east remains, the song as a motto generations must remain. Since the 27th day of Nisan was established as the Remembrance Day of the uprising of the ghettos and the Shoah, special gatherings have been organized in many places around the world, like this one. I remember in Argentina when I was a child, a youngster, the main event of this day was a ceremony during which many politicians, non-Jews, and many intellectuals, Jews as well known Jews, known for their anti-fascist and democratic positions were invited. Several of them delivered speeches on the topic. The remembrance of the Shoah was the opportunity to unite with all who fought for democracy, liberty, and those who values that fascism and Nazism had intended to destroy and that we 
that we can observe today, as it was already mentioned, in the drama that the Ukrainian people is suffering in our days. On November the 1st, 2005, the General Assembly of the United Nations designated January the 27th day of the liberation of the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camps by Soviet troops as the International Commemoration Day of the Victims of the Holocaust and for education and meditation on it. This is briefly the story of the different Remembrance Days. What is their main message? What can we learn from the poets and writers? What is the timeless message of the fighters? First and foremost, to remember that the Jewish people couldn't be transformed by the Nazis in Untermenschen, the humanicide humanoids, because this was the purpose of them, not only to kill them, but first to deprive them from their human qualities, from the human aspect. They try to transform them in some kind of untermenschen. Unter in German is uh, b b below, people who are uh, below, uh, undermensch under, below the normal condition of human beings. The fighters of the Warsaw Ghetto were chosen only as representatives of the many other active fighters in all the concentration camps and of the millions of heroes who with dignity entered the gas chambers shouting Shema Israel praying and studying in terrible human conditions, holding the flag of human dignity in the midst of the greatest horror and abject reality created by people in the history of humankind. The different remembrance days are moments for thinking, praying, and commitment. Most of the fighters lost their families their memories are living in us. We are the only ones they have to recite the Kaddish for their souls. We are the only one to repeat their songs. And we are those to whom they referred when they sang our long begged hour still will come. Es wird noch kommen unser ausgemengte Show. Beneath our feet, the earth shall tremble. Here we are. Es wird abpoigt on unser Trot mir sein und doch. This is the message of this day. For our times of anti-Semitism, and speaking at large, our days of hate, and confrontation, and the message is to be remembered forever. Thank you, Rabbi, for your insightful words. We remember all that was lost through the songs, as you said, and this is a Yiddish lullaby by the founder of Yiddish theater, Avraham Goldenfaden.
Turn to page 530 for the words of El Malay Rachamim, our psalm of mourning. I invite you to rise. together, fully compassionate God on high, to our six million brothers and sisters murdered because they were Jews, grant clear and certain rest with you in the lofty heights of the sacred and pure, whose brightness shines like the very glow of heaven, source of mercy, forever enfold them in the embrace of your wings, secure their souls in the eternity. Adonai, they are yours. They will rest in peace. Amen. Please be seated. Before we turn to words of Mourner's Kaddish, a special Mourner's Kaddish for this moment, we want to offer the opportunity for anyone who is remembering a loved one uh, who was murdered uh, in the Holocaust to share their name um, with us. If uh, any of you are uh, are online, you could share it in the chat as well. You can, you want to stand up so you
tradition at our synagogue is also to remember those whose yard sites are on this day as well. Um, and Betty Barkan, um, we get to share stories of our loved ones, and Betty is going to share a story of her father. Father, Morris Grossman, known better in my family as Zaidi Moisha. I'd like to share some memories of him. He was born in Poland in 1905 and lived there until the late 20s when he left to follow his older brother and sister to Toronto. He was very sociable and made lifelong friends on the boat to Canada. At some point in his early 30s, he was introduced by a distant cousin in Toronto to my mother, Katie Citrin, who lived in upstate New York. They married in 1935 and settled in Utica, New York. My dad worked in my mother's uncle's automotive parts business. My sister Paula and I were born in Utica. Every December, my father traveled by train to Toronto to visit his sister and brother and the friends from the old country that he met on the boat. My sister and I were mystified by the kosher salamis and pastramis he brought home in his suitcase from Toronto. The thing about my father that I did not fully grasp until I was in college or even later was that the family he left behind in Poland, in Poland all died in the Holocaust. In fact, I'm sure I never heard the word Holocaust until after the publication of Elie Wiesel's Night in the 60s. All this time, my father suffered silently and grieved for his lost family members, which included his mother, his sister, and brother-in-law and two nephews and probably others. And what he didn't do was talk about it. It was probably too painful to even imagine. Sometimes he would get very angry at something very trivial, which only now I can imagine was his pain at surviving the family that he lost. But after some time, he managed to build a positive life in America a life that included sending my sister and me to college and making us each a wedding, buying beautifully tailored suits from a local tailor to wear to shul on Shabbos and holidays, going to the YMCA, which he called the Schwitz, where he made friends with the young men who came to his funeral and told us how much they enjoyed knowing him, traveling at least twice to Israel. He loved Israel so much that he arranged to have his burial there. He always bought Israel bonds and instilled in us the importance of giving charity. He gave a lot of his modest income to charity, mostly one or two dollars stuffed in little white envelopes addressed to Eastern Parkway in Brooklyn. Most of all, he loved bragging about his Ivy League educated grandchildren to anyone who would listen to him. He was so proud of them. He was a good man and is affectionately remembered by, my, by his family especially, of course, by my sister and me and our kids. Thank you for letting me share him with you. Betty, we remember your father, whose yard site is today as well. And those join us online, Ed Lerner shared with us that he is remembering his three great aunts and two great uncles who perished in the Holocaust as well. We turn to our words of Mourner's Scottish on page 533. Please rise. Yikadal, Yikadash, Shemei Raba, Ponar, Vialma Divara Hirute, Fabiar, Vialmlich Malchute, Maidna, Mechayachon Uvyomechon, Berkana. Vechaid Chol Beit Yisrael, Kovno, the Agala Uvisman Kariv, Nanauska, the Yimru Amen, Yeheshme Raba Mivarach Leolam Ame Amaya, Yiparach Vishtabach, to Raisin Star, Vitapar Vit Ramam, Buchenval, Vinase Vitadar, Treblinka, Vitale Vitalal, Vilna, Shme de Kudisha Berichu, Bergen Belson. Ve'ela, Matthausen, Mikol Bichota Vishirata, Dachau, 
Tushpechata v'nechamata. Mint. Ta'amarin ba'alma. Warsa. V'yemru. Amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shemaya. V'chayim aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'yemru. Amen. Ose shalom birmoma. Uya ase shalom. Aleinu ve'al kol Yisrael v'yemru. Amen. Please be seated. We are going to turn back to page 531, the words Anim Amin. believe with perfect faith in the Messiah's coming. Despite it all, I still believe. We thank you for joining us this evening. We thank you, Rabbi Skorka, for sharing your words about remembrance. We are lucky that we get to study with you for the next few days and that you can be a part of this really special community. Thank you to Founder Randazzo for uh, helping to organize these really meaningful events. We remember those who have died. We will live on their legacy and continue to build a world filled with peace, with tolerance, and with love. Amen. Amen.